My name is Mikel. Oops. Is it on? Yeah. My name is Mikel Forcala, and uh, I am one of the uh, person that started Apertium with many other people. And uh, Apertium is uh, a, a open source, a free slash open source machine translation platform. But I wanted to talk initially a little bit about uh, free open source machine translation in general. Uh, so. Um, uh, okay, uh, when, uh, you probably are very familiar with these uh, de definitions of free and open source software. Uh, usually there are, there are two ways of looking at the same thing. Uh, free software is so software you can use for uh, any purpose. Uh, you can, uh, anyone can examine it uh, and modify it for any purpose and share it with other people. You can distribute it. That's the usual way that the Free Software Foundation looks at free software. Uh, there's the other point of view is looking actually at, at the procedure in which uh, software is developed and that's a way uh, in which uh, the open source initiative looks at it. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I, uh, before before I go on, I have three hats there. Uh, Center for Next Generation Localization in Dublin City University. That's where I am now. I am uh, based, uh, my permanent position is in the University of Alicante and I am also uh, in a company, a small company we started that does business on an upper team. Um, okay, so we can, there was, I, w I wanted to just make a, a small uh, uh, excursus about copyleft because it's something that uh, may be interesting. Uh, on top of free or open source software, you can have or not have copyleft. And copyleft is obviously a pun on copyright, but it's still copyright in the sense that we usually uh, we deal with it in the way we would deal with any copyright uh, uh, legally. We, lead, we de deal with it uh, like with copyright. So it basically means that any any uh, modification that you, that you make to your software, if you distribute them, you have to distribute them with the source because it would have to be distributed under the same license. And you have many licenses, you're probably used to them. Um, some of these licenses were mentioned in the, in the talk that uh, the We Localize people gave. So you have uh, the non-copyrighted uh, open source licenses like BSD or Apache or Creative Commons Attribution. Or you can have also the copyleted licenses of which the most famous one is GNU GPL, which is the one that Upper Team uses. Uh, one thing that's interesting about copyleft is that uh, uh, it secures or at least promotes the existence of, existence of uh, knowledge commons, and uh, that, so things are thrown in, maybe thrown into a, like a common box or common uh, area uh, that uh, uh, is prevented from private appropriation because of the uh, copyleft itself. And this is, an, uh, we found this to be a very uh, effective way of enabling a community of programmers or a community of developers developers that we will build bodies of free open source, free slash uh, open source uh, resources uh, because it requires that all of the uh, derivative word has to be, work has to be distributed uh, under the same license. And uh, I like uh, to say that uh, copyleft is uh, crucial or is one important thing, although it might not be uh, required, but it's, it helps very much in building a platform. Uh, so, uh, we know that, I don't need to convince, to convince you that uh, free and open source software is open for business, but many people still uh, ask us, like, how, how come your company is working on open source software and things like these. And uh, d d uh, basically it's because it changes the way you look at business and emphasizes the service part sometimes. And also, uh, one interesting thing that some uh, um, customers may like is that since the software is out there and you're offering services on that software, you're not the only person who can actually offer service on that one. And then they don't, they are not locked in to you as a vendor, but rather they, have, they look at you as one possible technolo technological partner in, the, in whatever you're trying to do. And it's true that uh, if a company engages in, do, in doing open source software, uh, third parties can engage in uh, business the, basically in the same in a level in the same field as you and can c compete uh, uh, effectively with you. The advantage is that you've been there before. So probably you have a, a certain time advantage. You know that uh, usually your uh, if you're the developer, your uh, know-how is uh, is deeper, and the other guys have to 
take longer. So that's usually the advantage you might, you might have. But you can do all kinds of businesses, and that's what we do with Apertium uh, in Promsit. Uh, so you can do inst you can install, configure the software, customize it for a customer, adapting it, uh, and you can even get a price. You can give a price break to your customer. You say, I'm going to adapt the code for you, but let me have the code. Well, let me open. Let me add it to the open source uh, pool of things, and I'll give you a price break because this improves my my my, my uh, chances of doing more business, and it improves your uh, your price, your final price for your service, and. Um, uh, of course, you can do business on non-copyrighted software, and uh, that means that you can do all this, and also you can sell uh, closed software based on it. So machine translation is special. When we talk about open source machine translation or free machine translation, we have to be uh, aware that machine translation has three components, uh, or you can see three parts. You can see uh, an engine, which may be called decoder in SMT or recombinator in EBMT or just an engine in uh, rule-based machine translation. You, ma you might have data, which are maybe dictionaries, rules, or maybe just corpora, and you have the tools to maintain all them and make them work with the engine you have. Uh, and I contend that for machine translation to be fully free slash open source, the engine, the data, and the tools have all to be uh, open source or free, which is uh, hard in the case of uh, corpus-based MT because that means that your corpora has to be free, and there are some corpora which are free, but some are not. So uh, uh, in rule-based, things are easier. If your dictionaries and rules are, are open source, then you're open source. Okay, uh, I think we've been working on this for 11 years now. Uh, Apertium uh, started in 2005, but it, uh, it drew uh, very much on previous projects uh, that the, my group in the University of Alacant had, uh, which were Internostrum and Traductor Universia. The technologies were machine rule-based machine translation technologies that were used basically to translate between very similar languages. So they, we had a quick uh, success with them. But we, uh, even if they were initially designed for uh, related languages, we extended them to deal with other languages with uh, variable success. Uh, so Apertium is a platform, I like to call it a platform. It's, a, it's an open source uh, machine translation platform that provides the, the, the three uh, components. First, it, uh, it provides you with an engine. The engine uses uh, uh, very uh, bread and butter, very simple uh, technology for machine translation. So uh, in addition to text format management, you have finite state lexical processing. All lexical processing is finite state for speed. Uh, statistical lexical disambiguation and shallow transfer based on very simple finite state pattern matching uh, uh, technologies. Uh, we also, uh, the pr 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 platform also provides linguistic data, you, I'll show you later in a slide, uh, in well-specified XML formats for a variety of language pairs, many of which are small languages that you will see in the slide. Uh, and also we provide uh, uh, the, the users with uh, free and open source uh, tool, tools like compilers to turn linguistic data into the fast and compact way that the machine translation engine uses, and also software to learn them from Corvora too. Uh, this is just a uh, slide that shows that it's a kind of a pipeline architecture. And uh, one thing that we uh, we make a lot of effort, uh, I mean, we, we emphasize is that all of the modules talk, talk to each other with text, so it's easy to modify, easy to diagnose what's going on. So it's a your typical Unix pipeline, uh, more or less. So. We provide currently, uh, 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 I think there are 21 stable language pairs uh, which are open source like all of Apertium. And uh, they include uh, all of these, you, you, you see the, uh, the, we have like big languages like Spanish or Portuguese or English. But we also have small languages like Breton or, or uh, um, Welsh. So, uh, in fact, uh, our community in Apertim is very was very from the very beginning it was motivated by the need to provide machine translation that was free and easily accessible for smaller languages. Initially, the languages of Spain, and we also have a, a growing number of language pairs under development. The, the project started uh, as part of a consortium with uh, three companies and four universities. The consortium is called OpenTrad, and uh, it was funded by the Ministry of Education, uh, sorry, Ministry of Industry, Tourism, and Commerce in Spain. Uh, 
uh, additionally, we've had uh, uh, funding from other ministries, from the government of Catalonia, from the government of Romania, for Romanians, for, uh, to, uh, Romanian to Spanish machine translation, uh, from uh, the, the universities that themselves have given us some money for projects, internal projects, uh, the Breton Language Board, Google is supporting us through uh, the Google Summer of Code, so we have nine students now who are working in different projects in Apertim, and last year we also had them, so we're very lucky to, to be able to have that uh, new uh, stream of developers coming into Apertium, and of course all of the companies who are using Apertium and also developing it and uh, prompts it, uh, my company, but also uh, Eleca Engineerica Linguistico, a Basque country company, or Imagine Software, which is in Galicia, in Spain, which were in the initial, uh, the, these last two were in the initial consortium that started Apertium. We also have a community uh, which welcomes everyone. Uh, it's not the probably the ideal community development situation uh, because it's usually a bit like in all, all open source projects you tend to have um, more things going on than you can actually organize well. But we have uh, more than one th 100 developers now uh, in the in the pr in the project. Uh, most of the documentation is is a wiki so that it's fastly updated and uh, every, the developers themselves can uh, update it. Uh, we have an IRC channel, so if you go to that channel, Apertium, you, you, see, you, you can talk to some of our developers. Uh, we have a mailing list, and uh, the good thing is that Apertium uh, packages, uh, the stable packages have been imported to Debian, and then they have surfaced in Ubuntu because of the, the way they, the, it's built. So currently, in, in one of the most common GNU, GNU Linux uh, distributions you can uh, have, you have Apertium there, you can just test it. It's part of, uh, of the packages that you can install. Uh, so on the um, on the uh, on on a per team. Uh, we, we do have uh, a platform, and that platform is, is being used to do both research and business. Uh, research, I, I was checking the other day in the wiki, we have more than 30 publications related to Apertium, and, uh, and uh, one PhD thesis uses uh, all of the components we're releasing to Apertium, and uh, four master thesis. And uh, as a business, uh, is being used by many companies like Promsit, uh, Eleka, Imagine, Imagine Software, etc., which are offering services to customers such as Autodesk or the, the government of Catalonia or, or one of the main Basque ma banks uh, or uh, the daily newspaper La Voz de Galicia. So you have many customers that uh, are uh, some customers, the big customers that are actually using Apertium and hiring these companies to do, uh, to provide them with services over the, over the platform. One thing that is good about having a free slash open source community is, th uh, is that uh, it creates a model of very tight interaction between many different stakeholders, like users, uh, researchers, developers, and vendors, because there's a continuum between them. Uh, 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 the, the One minute. I'm almost finishing. And, and, and uh, it makes it very easy to, to, for them to communicate to each other and make the product easier, uh, easily adapted to a new, a new customers or new users. Uh, uh, requirements. Uh, there's a lot of uh, free open source machine translation out there, and in fact, I, I, I set together, I put them together in a in a in a web page, which you will find in www.fosmt.info. And if you feel that one system is missing there, just let me know because it, it should be there. It's just uh, anything that has a free or open source license will should be there. And uh, in addition to Apertium, in during my stay in Dublin, during uh, my sabbatical stay in Dublin. Uh, funded by Science Foundation Ireland by the University of Alicante. I am involved in the openmatrix.org, which is the open sourcing of the technology of the corpus-based uh, machine translation system, uh, matrix that is the, uh, like the main machine translation system used in Dublin City University in the machine translation group. So I have been involved with open sourcing it, and we, uh, we have, uh, outside you can find flyers on Apertium and open matrix if you want at the table where the, where the badges were. Of course, the slides are free, so if you want them, they have a free license. Thank you.